Justin Jeffrey here. I'm here at Children's Hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we're going to a press conference where Congressman Driehaus and Senator Sherrod Brown are going to be discussing health care reform uh, along with a family that's dealing with uh, issues because they have a lack of insurance and they've been mistreated by their insurance company. Uh, we're going to ask them if they support single payer and if they don't, why not? And uh, I have invited some friends to come along, so hopefully they'll show up here and uh, we'll get some good questions and get some good answers. For a single payer system that would provide better coverage at a lower cost to people of the Ohio and people of the United States, and one that would uh, solve many of the problems you described here today. There's a bill both in the Senate now uh, and in the House, uh, HR 676 in the House, and Bernie Sanders bill in the Senate. Uh, well, are you taking up that option? Doesn't that seem as if so many people in the United States would be the best option? Doesn't that seem to you to be the best option to eliminate uh, the insurance companies that so mistreat families like ours? Um, I, will, I will support single payer on, in a floor amendment when Senator Sanders offers it. He does. President Obama has rejected that uh, that alternative. Uh, I'm putting my efforts as a result into the public option because I, I think that will provide say it doesn't it doesn't go as far as as, as Medicare for all. Another way of saying um, what you said, but it's um, it's simply I mean the president's not supporting it, uh, and the Congress apparently is not either. So I think we're doing the best thing we can with a strong public option, with insurance reform, with some of the things that Congressman Treehouse said, with, with, with um, uh, portability and, and better, uh, better computerization in IT. I thought that uh, Sherrod Brown's answer to the question that President uh, Obama had been the person who had taken single payer off the table uh, uh, shows that that, it, that that decision by the president is allowing is allowing every legislator in the country uh, to avoid responsibility for this. The president's taken it off the table as if there now will not be cannot be a fight about it. It should be the responsibility of legislators to stand up to the president to say the public needs this, the public wants this. This is the only way to provide complete coverage to all Americans at reasonable prices, reasonable costs, uh, and uh, and instead uh, the president uh, has completely given in to the insurance companies, and uh, it's very unfortunate. It's, uh, uh, we need to continue to build a movement such as the Single Payer Action Network in Ohio and all the others across the country, uh, that labor unions and uh, working people and uh, health professionals and many people uh, are supporting, believing that single payer is the only possible uh, future for American health if we're going to solve our problems. Have uh, either you, Senator, or the Congressman taken money from the health industry? like insurance companies or HMOs, for-profit um, corporations? I've got contributions from a lot of people. I've gotten a lot of assistance, especially from physicians, including many that work at uh, Cincinnati Children's. Um, I can actually look around and see some of them here who have. Um, I think my voting record speaks for itself. That I, I've, um, you know, I, uh, I stood up strong on the, on the tobacco issue last week past legislation tobacco companies didn't like. I'm working on the following biologics, which the drug industry doesn't much like, and I'm working on the public option, which the insurance industry doesn't much like. I, but I think the issue here is to write a to write good, progressive health care reform that gets people covered, that contains costs, and I think we're doing that. Congressman? Yeah, I would just echo Sherrod's remarks. Uh, I think I have probably received contributions, maybe not from as many doctors in the room as the Senator has gotten. Uh, but certainly from physicians, from insurance, uh, minimally from the pharmaceutical industry. Um, but I think, you know, part of what we do in running for office is raising money to pay for campaigns. It's, it's the part of our jobs that we don't like at all. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't draw the conclusion from that, as some do, that because you accept contributions from an entity, that you're therefore going to do their bidding uh, when it comes to votes on the House, uh, votes in the House or votes in the Senate. And I think as Sherrod's record has indicated, my record has indicated as a state representative and now as a member of Congress, you know, we're elected to do the will of the people and to serve our constituents the best way we can in, in serving our constituents. And, and that's what both of us will continue to do. Uh, 
John Lucknagel. I'm an emeritus professor of pediatrics and internal medicine, so I work here at Children's Hospital and at the University Hospital across the street. Uh, I'm here because the, the system is broken and it's imploding. And most of the proposals that I'm hearing keep the insurance industry in the loop. But they get 30-40% of the health care dollars, so mandating uh, people buy insurance is a boon for the insurance industry. The overhead for Medicare is only 2 to 3 percent of the health care dollar. Uh, a number of uh, weeks ago, uh, when I spoke with Congressman Driehaus, uh, he told me that, uh, well, you have to accept that it's going to be a process to, to get this. It's going to take time. Well, perhaps so. Uh, one of the, the processes that occurred to me is that uh, they could just keep dropping the age of decide how much money they want to spend, how much, and then lower the age for eligibility for Medicare, Medicare, uh, and, until we get everybody in, under the tent. Now, there are a problem with that, it's a gradualistic approach, but what they're doing is not going to provide comprehensive care for everybody anyway. And, uh, and the other problem that we have is that if we're going to provide medical care for everybody in the country, we're going to need a lot more nurse practitioners, and we're going to need many more uh, public health clinics, and uh, it's going to take time. Uh, it's easier to train nurse practitioners than it is for physicians. So, now, I, I understand that they're also discussing uh, punting to the states, and uh, so I, we have a group of us who are trying to get the help a, a publicly funded health care system in Ohio, too. And can you give us the name of that group? Well, it's called the Single Payer Action Network of Ohio, SpanOhio.org, and we've crafted a bill that if we can get it enacted, we'll provide comprehensive care for everyone in the state uh, that would be paid for by some, uh, financed by some collection, of, by some means. You know, we put three taxes in the bill, but the Constitution of the state says that the, an initiative process such as what we are doing uh, does not trump the prerogative of the legislature to write the tax law, so they can fund it in the way they want. That's basically. But the system is imploding. It's just a matter of when it's